since you mentioned that, Kenny, how would you handle that if somebody came to you like that? How would you respond instead of react? If you attack were me and I'll show, attack me and I'll show you. Like here's an example, Kenny. I thought these things were going to be done this way, and they were done that way, and I just, you know, I, I didn't like that it ended up that way. Um, we need to address it, but I have no idea how to. I just, I just really think you're in the wrong. Okay, so if I'm hearing you right, Dieter, what you're saying is you had an expectation that things would be done this way, and then you observed that they were done differently. And what I'm hearing is it's your reality that we agreed on this. Am I hearing that part right? Yes. Okay. And the fact that to you, these things um, we agreed on, they didn't get done this way. They got done this way. It sounds like you're having some really big feelings towards me about that. Um, I'm not sure exactly what feelings, you, you know, if you'd like to share more about that, I'd, I'd be really interested to hear so that you felt like those feelings were heard. Is that something you'd like to do? That's such a great response. I'm going to respond how. Please. Oh, yeah. Respond dysfunctionally. Like the whole point here is yeah. somebody who doesn't yeah. know any of this stuff. Yeah. Which, which is exactly what I'm going to, I'm going to do. I'm going to respond dysfunctionally to that healthy response you just gave me. Here's, here's one, here's one I've, I've experienced. Well, I feel like you're always putting yourself in this high horse and thinking, you know, everything, not everything's textbook, you know, like some things are different and you keep saying these things and they're, you know, it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't work. You know, it, it's just very arrogant. It's insulting. You know, it, it, I don't like it when you do that. And it even makes me not want to be around you. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for sharing all that. I want to make sure, um, and I want you to <clears throat> want you to know, I wasn't ignoring you. I was writing down, you know, the key points to what you're saying because it's important to me that I hear you. So let me see if I heard you correctly. What I think I heard you say was that I I tend to get on my high horse because I I think things should be done a certain way. Um, I think I heard you say that not everything is textbook, that some things are different, um, and not every, and this this way that I do things doesn't work. And about that, you feel, um, you know, it's insulting the way I go about things. And I started to write the last one. I put not B. I can't. So, did first of all, did I hear you correctly? And is that it, or is there more? Yeah. It's it's just too much. Um, I don't have every yeah. I don't have a, you know. I, I can't exactly put words to everything, but uh, you, I think you got most of it. Yeah. Okay. So let me just make sure. High horse. Um, uh, it, not everything's textbook. Um, some things need to be different. This system doesn't work. You feel insulted and it's too much. Is that it? Or okay. That's it. Well, uh, first of all, I need to own that you're right. <laughs> it's one of my struggles. I do get on my high horse. I do tend to think that my way is right. So I would say there's a lot of truth in that. I know <clears throat> I know it's something I'm working on and it's something I'd like to do much better at. Um so I would like to have a discussion because we may have different realities as to when I'm on my high horse. And it might be something where I'm like, no, I'm not. And you think I am. And maybe I need to learn. Oh, wait, I am. You know, I may not see myself clearly on that. So I, if, if you're open to that, I'd love to hear more about that because I know, I already know there's a disconnect between my heart and my execution of my heart. And that's something I'm always wanting to improve on. So I would love, whenever you're available, to have a discussion on that, to see what is you're observing in me so I can get better at getting those two aligned. So if you're open to that, I'd appreciate that. Um, I, As far as things being textbook, I think I would agree with parts of that. Yeah, I think life needs to have some flexibility. So I, I think um, you bring up some good points there. Again, I'd like to talk a little bit more of 
you know, maybe maybe we have some agreement on when to be textbook and when not to be textbook. Um, maybe, you know, I, I need to know more how you define that. I know what it is to me, but I don't know yours. So I'd like to have another discussion on that. Um, you, you mentioned that my way doesn't work. Um, well, I'm hearing that it doesn't work for you. And I'd like to know more about exactly, like I'm hearing a little bit of these things, but I want to know more if you can maybe take some time to think through bullet point exactly what doesn't work for you. I know a lot of the process that we've talked about really works for me and I find it very effective. Um, and so maybe after learning a little bit more about your views of it, maybe we find we align more on that than, than we think we do. But I think it, it might be just a lack of information. Um, now the last two, these, these make me sad. Um, cause I'm hearing some feelings in these that the, the one was, it feels insulting and it feels too much. Now, I don't know that this is what's going on inside of you. So I'm just going to share what I make up when I hear too much and insulting. Mm -hmm. And so when I hear that, I know if I felt I was being insulted or, or it was too much that I would feel um, invisible, um, mm -hmm. neglected, abandoned, discarded, um, put down, belittled, insignificant, and a whole host of other feelings. Again, I, I would be, I would really like to hear what those feelings mean to you because your heart matters to me. And I, I want to clarify. And so there might be some ways in how I'm interacting with you and going about this process. Um, and maybe if we have a little bit more discussion on that and could iron these things out, maybe you would choose different feelings. I'm not sure. Um, I just know it matters to me that uh, we have a good relationship and a good understanding for each other. And those two tell me that there's a problem here. And I'd like to work on that if that if you're open to that possibility. So that's how I would handle it. So did you did you hear how in all of it, there were three key things? Mm -hmm. I didn't once tell you who you are. I asked you Am I hearing you right? Are yeah. these your words? Not because this is what people listen and then they go, well, this is what you mean. I'm going to take your inventory and I don't care what words you used. I know better than you. That's a very parentified position. And mm -hmm. now, now, because this is what happens. Everyone, two things are happening in an argument. Both are fighting for the victim position. Mm -hmm. is what you did to me is worse, but both are trying to exercise power and control and make the other one the bigger victim to, to try and <laughs> satisfy, to try and satisfy how they both feel victimized. So they yeah. both just keep coming over in time. It just gets bigger and bigger. And so the first solution uh, is, right? Isn't that, isn't that it? Yeah. And, and so the first solution is this, none of what you said is about me. Your remember what are words? Words are descriptors and metaphors to describe how you're feeling inside yourself. And so all I did was invest in you. Mm -hmm. Is this is this a descriptor you're feeling? Mm -hmm. This is this the metaphor? And then so that's the first thing. Am I hearing your internal emotional condition? Mm -hmm. Number two, where's the truth? I'm not going to, most people immediately look for where they can defend and make you the victim, you know, you're victimizing me with your opinion of me, right? There's the race to the victimhood. And now I'm going to come over top and show how terrible you were for saying I'm on my high horse, mm. right? Instead, I listen, wait a minute. Well, I already know I get really cocky and arrogant. And I do like, the, I, I get so passionate about this stuff. I lose containment and think I know everything. I do get on my high horse. Like it's true. Yeah. So work on, like all of those things are, so I take ownership of it. And then in the process of taking ownership of it, I extend an invitation to learn about me. Mm -hmm. Asking you for your input. 
Mm-hmm. Now, now I've just ele- I've just opened the door to relationship. I've just elevated your thoughts and opinions because we have a deeper relationship where I value because you said you wanted the relationship to continue and grow. This was the type. So, well, if I'm already that far with you, I must have some sort of value with you, you know, about your opinions and beliefs because we've gone that far. So hell yes, I'm going to open the door to your assessment of me and a deeper conversation so we can open because I trust your view. We may not agree on everything, but I am going to, you're a trusted consultant. I'm in business with you based on this, you know, situation we just created. So of course I'm going to do that. And most important, I made it all about me. Even as I extended my empathy towards the potential feelings I didn't project on you. This is what you mean by that, that I'm insulting you, that I'm too much. I didn't race to the victim position and accuse you of tearing me down. Instead, I got inquisitive and I shared when I have heard words like that, I choose to make myself feel these small things. Not sure if those are yours. If they are, I'd love to hear more because your heart matters to me. So do you hear how it, the difference is, instead of a a disempowered, manipulative, race to the bottom victim position, which then we use to falsely empower ourselves and come up above and be the abuser by belittling the other one while we claim we're the victim, right? Right. I strip all of that away. I get on it. I get into truth. Authentic self cycle. Truth. Where in where in their assessment of this is their truth? I own it. I take responsibility for my part. I do the healing work within me and make an invitation for us to heal together. And I forgive us both for being human and limited. And that's how you end confrontation. And confrontation becomes connection. Do you, as you listen to me, give that feedback. Would you be willing to share what was happening inside of you emotionally? Absolutely. And before I do so, I just want to say what I heard from your uh, your feedback right now, which was I heard a lot of empathy. I heard a lot of understanding. I heard a lot of true connection and understanding. And it's a, such a great example of what it's like to be on the receiving end, hold a healthy boundary because it takes a lot of energy for that. Sometimes we may be up for it. Sometimes we may not. Sometimes we didn't sleep well. We didn't eat. We skipped breakfast or lunch, right? Sometimes um, some bad things, quote unquote, happen today, right? And we may not be up for it, but sometimes we can. And that's, a, in my eyes, this is a great representation of how amazing we can show up for others when maybe they're not showing up as their best or their healthiest version in this moment. So for me, emotionally, what was happening if, you know, in actually a specific experience that happened just like that, and I was on the receiving end, fortunately, because of the work, because first of all, what I've learned from you and because of the inner work, I was able to respond with a very similar approach to yours. My emotional experience, though, was... There was definitely, and I noticed these things a little bit after the the conversation. Uh, I didn't numb out in the moment. Like there was a numbing out sensation. Fortunately, I did have enough energy and enough emotional mastery work to acknowledge like, ooh, like Mm. slow down before responding because this could turn into a situation where I attack. So I did have that maintain conscious connection saying, let's do this this way, that way. And after the conversation, I did notice there was trauma coming up to the surface for me. Let's just, I call these opportunities for healing because immediately I felt like my whole body was shaking. I needed to take a walk. At this point, I'm aware of like my body sensations when these things happen. So I needed to take a walk. I realized I really wanted to push something, push things away. I felt a lot of anger, large amounts of anger, large amounts of sadness, large amounts of disappointment, confusion, 
it was a cocktail of emotions like that circulating almost like a like a carousel <laughs> you know like and it's it's like a spinning sensation with those emotions um and then definitely you know the, the a little bit of that dark cloud and numb to the point where I was like, okay, I need to get into my, knowing the work, now I know I need, when that happens, I need to get into my body because I, I start getting all up in my head and developing all these rationalizations, whether it's rationalizing what happened, rationalizing what I should say, rationalizing anything, how I should blame, how they're the problem, how I should just leave, how this doesn't work for me and I'm out, you know, all these things. And, uh, Fortunately, the voice of reason within me that's connected to my authentic, you know, emotions said, look, there may be a lot of anger present in this moment, but I want to make the decision of what to say next and what to do next from a neutral emotional place. Because if I say something right now, Sometimes it happens during the conversation. Maybe you respond like this, but then two hours go by and that's when these things kick in, right? And then you're like, you know what? I'm going to freaking text you right now how you are the problem. <laughs> and you, you may just unwind the healthy delivery you just had two hours ago and it may just become a complete contradiction, right? So that's the thing where I realized, hey, let's slow, keep slowing down, keep slowing down. And I had to do a hot bath. I had to do more things, you know, listen to some music to get me back into my body and then release emotions, release. The biggest one that I released was anger. I needed to hit things. So I did. Sometimes I just put like water on like either um, on a tub or on a, on a sink and I'll just smash in the water like this or pillows or whatever it is I need to hit or the car seat um in, in, inside of the car like the passenger seat in the in the car uh where nobody can hear it and i don't bother anybody but i can literally just liberate that energy somatically as intensely as possible because i what i've learned about my trauma and my history is that i piled them i piled up decades of anger suppressed anger for so long that sometimes when it comes out it connects with all these emotional memories within me that then it becomes like this little anger becomes big anger and releasing that then allowed okay a little bit of that grief some tears of sadness and that's when i you know it, it, i had two cycles of that meaning it wasn't just once it was one day then the next day fortunately i, I have seen how the ongoing, you know, if I if one day I have it, then the next day I have it. The next day is a little bit milder, and then eventually, if there's anger again about that same situation, it's just very soft. It's like a little whisper. Um, so most of that somatic, you know, that emotional memory energy is released. Presently, because uh, this is actually a pretty recent thing for me. Um, presently, the good news is I I did so much release of this the anger and the grief and the sadness and the disappointment and the confusion and hearing myself sitting down with me talking to myself my addressing myself with those emotions as i you know like my inner child needs to be heard and understood to the point where i could then rationalize what my next steps are and that's where i'm at but i think this, this pretty much answers uh does that, does that answer the yeah. entire question of the emotional experience? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, it Confrontation, you said it, and it's my belief. All of these so-called negative things are the doorway into peace. Yep. If we do the work, they always arrive at Look at, you know, like you said, you went off and did all this anger work, which was really trauma recovery work from childhood. Well, that's how you can expand being, go ahead, what? Three what? Well, looking at your three steps, I saw it, you know, what emotion? Anger. Where in my body? It's actually my belly. I didn't want to swallow this experience, particularly because when I heard the tonality 
of the expression towards me, the memory was my mother berating me as a child, right? So then the healing opportunity is right there. There you go. And the expression so, of- I, <clears throat> Thank God this person acted that way. Because now I got to go deal with the remember emotions. They're learned constructs. And so your reaction in the moment had to do with your mother, had nothing to do with this person. So yep. I look forward to people being inappropriate. Because if I use the emotional mastery process, all I ever get is peace and freedom. So why would I want to avoid so called <laughs> bad people? You know? It's funny, but it's true. Yes, yeah. That's it. Life is a it's all a paradox. That's my next book. You know, the theme is it is I show how virtually everything we've been taught how to live life, the answer is in the opposite. It's a paradox. You know, we we want to go towards the darkness because all it ever does is bring the light. Um but to to achieve that, at least in my reality, which doesn't make me right, I will take myself off the high horse in this moment. <laughs> um, at least in my reality, you will see the light if you choose to pursue the authentic self cycle and the emotional mastery process. Then you get you get the benefit that comes from the dark and the pain. If you choose not to, then you are left in purgatory the rest of your life. And it takes patience, definitely patience with it, because initially a lot of us are not going to be able to go, oh, I'm feeling anger and sadness, and it's to this memory with this person, and that happened. No, it's going to be like, I feel weird. I have no idea what's going on. Never got you know, it. <laughs> yeah, like literally, that's it. That's as far as we can go in the beginning, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's we're we're children. I mean, that's what people that no one wants to hear that. It's just truth. We're all adult children. And we have to choose, and we never matured out of childhood. And we have to decide if we want to stay in childhood or become adult. Well, if you want to become adult, you got a lot of work to do. And that that goes for all of us, even the most successful people. Um but it's just like anything in life. Yeah. How much time and energy you dedicate to it will pay off dividends. Because for me, it's one of the reasons why I took a two and a half year sabbatical to literally just focus on this. Yeah. Not to say that everyone needs to quit their job and just focus on this. But that's what I did, right? It, it did have its benefits. And I'm glad that I took the time in my early 30s to disconnect from the world, disconnect from everything that I thought was my personality and how things are and then be able to finally relax spend some time in nature spend time with my body spend time with my emotions spend time in silence with myself and truly deeply get to understand myself and know myself yeah at least for where we are today I there's lots of times that I, since I've started this journey, I thought I had it figured out, thought I knew myself. And the further I get along, the more open I am to is I'm still absolutely clueless. Like, I mean, logic says I, I know quite a bit about myself and, you know, I've spent a lot of time. So therefore, I'm probably, you know, fairly or, you know, pick your adjective, pick your descriptor to, um, as far as my level of understanding of myself. But because I'm, I've done so much work on the high horse issue, um, I recognize it's just my best guess of where I am today. And it'll probably be different. And it'll be, it will be different tomorrow and each day after that. And I am open to the possibility that I'll wake up in a month, a year, 10 years, and recognize I had no clue who I was in this moment, even though I think I have a pretty good clue in comparison to life up to this point. 